When you try to manage risk and uncertainty around the CapEx project, you should be able to list items in two categories prior to making the investment. The category called what we know and the category called what we know we don't know. The latter is also called the known unknowns. After implementing the CapEx project, you should have a lot more information than before it. You can update the first two categories and provide input into the third, which is called what we don't know that we don't know, also known as the unknown unknowns. The main benefit of doing a retrospective on a capital expenditure project is to summarize the lessons learned in the previous project before you embark on your next project. Transfer what you learned about things that you didn't know that you didn't know into the columns of what you now know or what you now know that you don't know for your next project. Let me illustrate this with an example. Back in 2009, I asked myself the question, do I invest in solar panels? At the time, this was a fairly new technology and the upfront investment for 12 solar panels, including installation, was 11,655 euros. The government provided a 15 year subsidy back then, paid in installments over the lifespan of the project in order for the revenue per kilowatt hour generated to be guaranteed at 56 cents, up to a maximum of just over 1700 kilowatt hours per year. What I obviously didn't know at the time and was aware I didn't know was the actual kilowatt hours that solar panels on my roof would generate. I took the capital budgeting inputs of the upfront investment amount, the expected benefit per year and the 15 year time horizon and calculated a payback period of 12 years, an MPV of just 20 euros and an IRR of 3.02%. I normally don't calculate IRRs with two decimals, but made an exception here. Remember that in 2009, we were deep into a financial crisis. Stock market returns were very volatile, with some people making huge losses. Interest rates were very low, and you couldn't even trust that your savings in the bank were okay, as banks were collapsing left and right. So given the circumstances and my interest in green technology, the project economics were not that bad if you put them into context. And I expected my base case to be the bare minimum. My first reason to be optimistic was the structure of my house. The solar panels would be installed on the roof with nearly perfect conditions, facing due south on the 37 degree angle. So hopefully there would be some upside in the number of kilowatt hours generated per year. Additionally, a 15 year lifespan sounded short to me. Every extra year of operation would add positive returns. Here we are in 2025 and it is time for a retrospective look at the investment. Actual generation per year was around 2000 kilowatt hours. First we expected 1700. Based on usage data of solar panels, it looks like the typical lifespan turns out to be 25 years or more, first we expected 15 years. All of the factors that back in 2009 were in the what we know we don't know category turned out to be favorable. There were some surprises in the unknown unknown category as well. After a successful court case by an Austrian guy with solar panels on his roof, owners of solar panels across the European Union were allowed to reclaim the value added tax they paid for purchase and installation. That 1800 euros took a while to actually land in my bank account, but it was worth the wait. Big upside. There was also a small downside in terms of having to pay some additional metering charges that I hadn't expected. And at this point in time, in 2025, there are huge concerns among homeowners in my country due to the metaphorical smoke screens being created by utility companies regarding reimbursement for selling electricity back to the grid. It is very blurry and uncertain. So much so that new installations of solar panels have dropped dramatically. So the estimates of the financial benefits for the additional 10 years of operation are still very much a rough estimate with a big disclaimer that these numbers are subject to change. Based on all of the above, I recalculated my project economics based on what I know today and translated that back to 2009 equivalents, the time of the original investment. The payback period has improved from 12 years to 10 years. MPV turns out to be around 4100 euros, using the same very low 3% discount rate 
as you in the original calculations. IRR has doubled to 6.5%, for just over 3% in the original calculations. If I needed to present this in a company setting, I would show this beautiful IRR walk graph that has only greens and no reds. The main benefit of doing a retrospective on a capital expenditure project is to summarize the lessons learned in the previous project before you embark on your next project. The VAT refund is now something I know. Additional metering charges do not apply anymore as there are no more subsidies on solar panels and no related reporting requirements. The uncertainty around the rates for selling back to the grid are there, but at least we know that we don't know the full answer here yet. If my current solar panel system stops operating and I consider investing in into a new system, I need to take into account that there are no more subsidies, but at the same time the investment per kilowatt hour has come down exponentially over the past decade and a half. A big factor to add to the what we know that we don't know category is the economics of installing a battery system along with a new set of solar panels. Time will tell if it will be worth it. <laughs>